Yo, welcome back guys. Right, video today, second fix, and this is the video I did a while ago when Adam wasn't here. I think he was on holiday or Sky, I remember the day off. Uh, ben and Adam are here, they're gonna be second fixing where the plasterer filled in my holes. Hang on. Uh, two way switching to go on here and here. Bathroom, it's 2D fitting to go in here, an external switch. So I don't know if it's my incompetence my naivety or my stupidity. You could choose one of the three for this. I was never told there needs to be an extractor fan in here. There was no plans, it was like, Nick, we have some lights, this and lights, boilers in here, and there's a downstairs toilet, and there's no window. Extractor fan needs to go in. So what I've brought with me is my massive SDS, my SDS Max, uh, which we don't use very often because it's so big. But the only reason I'm using that is because my whole saw set, which is this one, is stuck in the adapter that we used ages ago for the SDS Max. I physically can't get this out because normally I would just use my normal SDS. So we have to use that one. But I will be doing that uh, in a little bit. We're gonna get the dust collector, a little frame that sits around this onto the Hoover. I'll do a pilot bit from inside and then I'll start doing it from outside. I'm gonna get the stud detector on there. I know there's no pipes because obviously everything's serviced and there's no cables because I did all the cables. So uh, we will do that in a little bit. I've got to go to my kids' nativity play, so I'm gonna leave the camera here with Adam and Ben for a little bit. He's gonna isolate this, show Ben our safe isolation, safe isolation, and room through the procedure with that. But hopefully they're gonna get some footage for you. Yo, right, so what, what are we on, Thursday morning? Yeah. yeah. So Nick's gonna to have to go in a minute to his kids' like, nativity play. So me and Ben, Ben's here. Ben's just doing a two-way switch. Been nice, give him just the free core side. So I've got all this to play with. Um, technically, the lights and everything's still on at the minute. Obviously, the plaster has took all this off, and yeah, naughty, naughty. So we're going to turn the power off in a minute. Obviously, we've got that one is cut out that down light, so we're doing three down lights in here. So that one's pretty much good to go. Um, we need to do these ones. Nick did cut these out, but the plaster you can see has filled the hole in. So I bought in the hole saw. So I'm going to draw around it and then just clean it up a bit, enough so I can squeeze the downlight in with the pad saw. Um, we've already put the sockets on, so we've got three sockets there, obviously, for these appliances. And then, then that's it, really. Oh, no, in there we've got um, a little bulkhead light to put in, a BT-14. And Nick's going to have the fun of chasing the wall for a four-inch fan. And he's just fell down the stairs. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sorry, I did a swear word. Yeah. Um, to everyone that watches the channel as well. Sorry, Cheryl's behind it. She doesn't mind being on footage. See, Cheryl? I don't mind what? Being on YouTube. Oh, you do? I did that one day. I was like, that behind you. Brilliant. She's done it again. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Um, anyone that likes a little behind the scenes YouTube stuff, I'm not even told you I've just had a, an Instagram message. Oh, yeah? You know, like, if I get sent a product that's not electrical related, that we do a video on it? Yeah. An e-bike? Yeah. <laughs> I just put back the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Two grand e-bike. Are you me? You can go across the chase. Yeah. Do -do -do -do. You lot would hate Like a sewer on or something like that? No, no. It's no. like a it's cheaper make. But thank you. Um, but yeah, I've got to go now. So I've got the floor upstairs. So just crack on. Yeah. See what you can do. Um, if you need to, if you run out of things to do. Yeah. Do that. If less than one mil. No. Right, so this is what's the problem with the down lights. As you can see, Nick cut like a 74 mil hole, I think it is, for these down lights. And the plaster is covered it with muck as usual. So literally going to get the hole saw up there. Probably get Ben to quickly record and I'll show you what I'm going to do. That or technically I could put the, it the other way, but you don't really want the teeth to mark the fresh plaster. So what's this one? 73, so that should be about right. Right, so I'm pretty much just going for it, just nibbling around little by little, and then just double checking with the whole saw. So where I'm at now, I'm pretty much there. I just need to clean the edges, make it more like a circle, basically, so it would go up. Right, so after a lot of wiggling around with the pad saw and messing around, we have now got it, so it'll fit in. And obviously, all that, you see it's obviously not a clean cut like we would with a whole saw, but that's the best we can get it. Obviously, it's all going to be covered up by this lip. Um, so yeah, that should pop up. Obviously, I've not wired it up yet, so just double checking it will go up and then I'll pull it down. Oh God, this is gonna get my fingers, this is. 
Right, so got Ben prepped. He's gonna do this down light. First ever down light. He just literally cut that one so they're the same length to make it a bit easier. So obviously you've got to strip the cable now, the outer sheathing, but obviously we want the, you know like when you expose the colors, like the, f the first layer of insulation, we want that within that enclosure. So we don't want any gray out of that. Yeah, now if you like push and wiggle, that's it. Right, whilst it's like that, that's not fully in. So if you see the live, yeah. if you grab the live in the middle and just bend it to the left a bit. Hey, what? Yep. Yeah. Right, so first down light is pushing up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> nah, it shouldn't get you to be fair. All right, that's like up. And then if you hold the springs a bit lower down, like give it a little wiggle left and right up as you're going up. Yeah, right, now just watch your fingertips. Grab it, like I said, at the bottom. Keep going. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's the, obviously, it, some of them do go like straight up, but because it's lath and plaster above it, it's a bit like, it catches a bit, you know, and then bits of lath, like the wood. Yeah. But yeah, that's always good to check. You see how you double check if the fire seal's fully secure. Yeah. And if you grab it like the insides, not the ball boulder, just yeah. give it a little wiggle to make sure you know it is properly secure. Excellent. Yeah, so, right, get the bulb in. Right, so we're fitting, what bulbs we got? Megalux bulbs, 6K, 7 watt, not dimmable. And then we've got the JCC Fire Guard. These are the new ones, um, anti-glare bezels. So they, they're like a bit of a different design. They've got like a beveled edge that sits within it. It's a bit, yeah, we fit a few of them, they work well. So there you are, mate. Right, so what we usually do is, yeah, you've seen it before, clip the bulb in into the holder or lamp and then you got to line it up with the bigger ones twist it yeah is that in and then literally it's just push up and then twist the bezel round keep going until you feel it grip up yeah that's it nice and easy how was that your first down like yeah it's not too bad is it yeah we've let nick do all the hard work of running all the wires and stuff so it's not too bad Right, so we've got this one to do, and then obviously just pop that one up, but that one's already, the hole's already cut to the right size, so it's not too bad. And then I'll let you, I'll run you through it, but we'll put a BT14 up next door, which is that big bulkhead light. Yeah. That's pretty easy as well, I think that's push connectors, so. Right, so me and Ben, well, Ben's been in this now, so about 20 minutes, you say, something like that, of dislocating my thumb, trying to get in this hole, uh, trying to fish the cable, but we managed to get it, so. Obviously, the plaster has pulled it back that side, but he's here. So, let's try and bring the cable down and my fingers and not bring down the ceiling. And if I let go of this cable, it's going to fling all the way back in there. And there's a waste pipe as well above here because the bath's above here now. Yeah. <sighs> that hurts. There's a laugh as well, so it's all scratching me. But yeah, there we go. There it is. <sighs> yeah. That's right, I was pulling it to make sure it didn't go back, but yeah, my hands are all scratched still. So. Right, so you saw how dark it was in here before. Good thing about the uni lights we use, this is a new one. Stick straight to the boiler, magnetic, just point it straight up, and bash it. So in here, we've got the fuse board the other side of this. We've got a drill through, put a fuse spur onto the boiler's hard wires, because temporarily the plumber just hooked it up to an extension and put like a three amp fuse in it. So we've got to fix that, make it more permanent. And then Nick has done a downlight hole, um, just so that it was easy for us to access the cables because we need a plaster and we'd push them up and lose them, which by the looks of it he has. So we'll just get, I'll fish up there, get the cables down, and then obviously we're putting a BT14 up, so that's like a good, well, however big it is, we know it's big, so it covers all the excess, that hole and everything. Um, and then Nick's put in the wall fan about, there. Don't worry, I'm back. Invigorated by the kids singing. Anyway, uh, Adam says he's got loads of footage, so I will only see when I edit this, and hopefully it's absolutely delicious. You'll just see me waging about bathrooms. What was that, sorry? <laughs> I've taught him so well. Ben's in there. Yeah, Ben, doing that. That's a good angle. I'm just gonna wait till Ben gets out of the way. Gets out of the way? Gets out of the way. I'll say it one more time, gets out of the way. Um, once he, oh my Jesus Christ. I've got the Hoover, so what I'm gonna be doing, I've got that drill, which is the SDS Plus, 
We're drilling out with a pilot bit, a rim there, and then connecting the hoover up to my suction cup, which will, you know, you put these on the inside or the outside. Outside, you create just as much mess. So put that up there, and then we're gonna use the big SDS with the core bit and drill through. In minus seven it is, so there's a nice bit of sun just there, not down this bit. So that's what the plan is. So give me five minutes, I'm gonna do that, and then, fingers crossed, Ben would have smashed it. Uh, we're running down the extractor and trunking as well. Um, like I said earlier, this is just for building control to get it ticked off and packed. No, I'm saying it's not gonna get removed. That's not what I'm saying with a big four inch hole in the wall, but we're doing what we need to do. Uh, the customer just said, I'm not bothered. It's just a toilet. Stick some trunking down because it's already been plastered. So hence why we're doing it that way. Right, I'm just losing my rag because my GoPro won't turn on because it's cold anyway. Bosch, extractor, hoover, whatever you want to call it. If you're the type of person that moans at me because I call it a hoover, then pff, whatever. Just extractor, they've got the clips on it. All clips together, honky dory. Turn that on, I get it sucked on. And then, uh, yeah, I'll start drilling, so we'll get a bit of footage, but no one really wants to see me just for four hours. A little update for you. Um, don't buy one of them. I think it, I've had it for years and it's worked on and off great, but this just, it just ain't having it. It just won't stick. I don't know if it's because the cold wall, the absolutely enormous drill that vibrates the entire house. My very sturdy footing, but it just ain't working. Hoover's turned off, extractor. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd be honest with you. It normally works great, it's just not working. And I'm not gonna try and record myself using it because the noise is so loud that to edit it down, it's just an absolute bit of pointless foot. I don't know why I'm telling you this, anyway, yeah. Right, my own issues um, with this. That arm is it's too long with the extender bit on that takes from SDS plus to max. I know you can just get the, why am I still with them? I thought I was showering. I know you can get the, bits that attach it straight onto STS Max, if I didn't have one. And we did this years ago, I don't know if I said this in the video, we use this for this for a video, then this bit has welded itself onto this bit, so I can't get it off without buying a new one, which I just haven't got around to because I barely do any core in. That, it's just too big and heavy. As big as I am and as strong as I think I am, it's just not feasible, you can't manage it, you can't feel the wall, if you know what I mean. You can't feel the, each bit you go through in the stages of being nearly there. It's just too big and too, boom, because it's SDS, it's a hammer drill. You're not really meant to hammer drill through for coring because it damages the core bit and it doesn't do great at all. This doesn't have the function just to do spinning. It always has to have the hammer function. So because it spins around so much, you can see open the hole, got a bit chipped out here, but it'll be covered by the grill. Obviously that's your four inch hole and these bits here where it spins around on the bar as it wobbles. And I've got through to the next layer, gone through the cavity, but I'm terrified. Okay, he's watching. Okay, uh, but I'm terrified of, because it's so big and heavy that instead of just core drilling and it's hammer drilling, it's just gonna blow the brick out into the plastered wall. Yes, you could go on the inside and core in, but the drill bit is so long, it won't fit in between the wall and the stud wall behind. So what I'm doing is stitch drilling now with the smaller SDS. It doesn't look much smaller, but it is. That's a nice little engrave logo on there, Ben. That's right. Um, now we've got the bit in there, I can stitch drill round, poke through slightly. And then from the inside, I can go around with a pad saw and I can SDS it through this way with the chisel bit, break it up almost like we're stitch drilling for a socket. So it's, I'm gonna sell that drill. If anyone wants it, please drop me a message because I don't need it. It's too big for me. It's more for industrial in my eyes, but you want it drop me a message and you can have it for a very good price this is the part of the video which you've seen the thumbnail and the title this has just cost me some money stupidity has has ruled here um stitch drill through that thought no problem i was just breaking through like i said with the little drill you can feel the wall you can feel when you go through and i felt like i felt the wall but not like that. Um, I'll show you inside. Yeah, it's a finished plastered wall, that is. Oops. Um, yeah. 
I thought this wall had been stripped back and reboarded. I thought it was just dabbed ball because everywhere has been redone. Like here, everything's been dabbed off and it was stripped back to brick. But this wall obviously wasn't. I should have thought about this from the colour of the old wall there. This is all render plaster. So I was just thinking I would be able to punch through or just uh, feel the drill bit hit the plasterboard, come out, because I've been feeling it just touching it, but tickling it, if you know what I mean. But then obviously, because this is old plaster and it's not plasterboard as one solid sheet and there's no cavity between it, I've been bursting my way through and splintering all the plaster. So now it's gonna cost me to repair it. As much as I get on with the customers, they ain't gonna be too happy with this. I'm not showing them yet. Um, to work out something, whether or not I just don't charge them for fitting this fan and then the money they've saved from me not charging them to fit it, they can patch it up. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's not loads, but it ain't the best from me as a spark of 12 years been doing this. They should know what I'm doing. This is a bit of a stupid error, to be honest. I don't know, you can tell. If you look just, just to the right of it, you can see a tiny bit of chip plaster. It's not good enough. It's not funny. If you don't laugh, you cry. So if the customer come back to his nip shop to uh, tell him the bad news. Um, it's not the end of the world. A bit of plastering, a bit of filling really. You could probably put some filler on it. Not me, because it would look worse. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna say to the customer, I won't charge, just pay for the fan and then uh, I won't charge for doing the stuff. That's uh, my bad. Every day is a school day, live and learn. And uh, I was too busy enjoying myself outside in the cold, drilling through without, I should have just come and checked on the first hole. So my mistake, um, but I'll update you in a minute when the customer comes back and uh, see how tied off I get, all right. So that's just tidying up. I've had to go and do some videos for the ring stuff uh, in the van. <coughs> Customers just come back and run through it all. And I've worked for them for a couple of years now. We've done the whole place and they pretty much said it is what it is. Don't worry about it. I said, you know, I won't charge you. They said, no, 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 it's fine. Um, which is really good. So I'll, uh, I'm gonna, he's, what he's gonna do with that is plaster it over the weekend in and around because I wanna put the extractor on, but I've got no proper fixings. I need a clean edge, as you can imagine. You try and screw an extractor back and it's not flush, it just twists. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna get a couple of bottles of wine. I'm gonna be around a couple of days before Christmas. The last day, last job actually before Christmas. Adam's off next week. I'm gonna bring a couple of bottles of wine over and just say, Thanks for all the, the jobs you've given me. And sorry about your wall. So don't do what I did. Try and think of it. Simple mistake to make. I've done it before. Not this severity. So um, I don't know, we're all tied up the van. We've got to go and do the job yet. So have a nice Christmas, depending on when this comes out. And we'll see you soon, won't we, Adam? Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. Right, weekly video. Um, we've done the job this morning, it went horrifically wrong for me. Uh, Adam didn't do much better. Ben, you come off all right unscathed. Um, here's what it is. But we're about to go sandbatch, which is about 50 minutes, and I'm starving, and I haven't brought my um, lunch with me. So I wanted to eat something healthy. So I got a tray of... Sushi? That's it, sushi. Which probably isn't the healthiest thing, but it's come with this wasabi, which I've never tried. I just had spicy food. So we're all gonna have a little... No Come on, you gotta have some. Have a bit. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the smallest bit. Yeah. You're gonna put loads on me, ain't you? That'll do. <laughs> right. Don't swear. Don't think... Sorry. Uh, three, two, one. Oh, the texture's horrible. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Wild. It tastes like alcohol. <laughs> You know, when you breathe, I, I sniffed as I ate it, and it... <laughs> it tastes like paint. Oh, like the smell of paint. Anyway. I'll it's see not you. really, like, spicy. It's just, like... feels like fumes, do you know what I mean? And what's this as well? They've sent me this. They've sent me this. Oh, it's pickled ginger. Don't have that. Pickled That's ginger. like that. Do you want... <laughs> that tastes that horrible. Tastes... Look, hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you at the job.